Welcome back, everyone, to These Aren't the Nerds You're Looking For. Kevin Hort here. Lorenzo Font here. See how I let you introduce yourself, and last <laughs> week you just I just rolled didn't right into give it, me that man. opportunity. I was excited. I was That's ready right. to go. What are we talking about this week, man? Hey, we got another Clone Wars episode. This one is called Monster, and it's not the drink. It uh, right. it must be must be something else. So, uh, original air date here is January fourteenth, two thousand eleven. Uh, mm-hmm. This is season three, episode thirteen, production uh, three ten. So last week, yeah, we're we're on a we're on a roll, and we will be on a roll uh, for a long time as far as um, chronology and order of release. Uh, we're rolling all the way through the rest of season three and all the way through season four and partway through season five. And then we only have one more time jump, uh, till we get to the end of the series. So good to we're pretty much just rolling straight through. But anyway, uh, monster. Yeah. Yeah. About that. Directed by Kyle Dunleavy, written by Katie Lucas. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then, uh, the fortune cookie is evil is not born. It is taught. That is very true. Or is it? Um, Outside of Star Wars Universe, I would say that this is... um, Hitler's mother? Maybe. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I'm blanking. I'm blanking here. Yeah, where are you going with that? I don't know. But uh, inside the Star Wars Universe, I'm seeing Darth Bane. And uh, I don't know how familiar you are with Darth Bane. We talked about him a yeah. little bit last week. Uh, who you got? See if you came up with something better. I was going Obi Wan, late life Obi Wan. Okay, explain. Based on his relationship to Anakin and the shit that they have both gone through, and the shit that he has seen his friend go through. Okay. Right, and the transformation of his trusted friend into one of the baddest dark lords of the galaxy. Okay. Right. It feel this feels like something that in the little hidden moments on Tatooine, hanging out with Luke Skywalker, that this could be. You know, not something that he would directly tell Luke is related to Darth Vader, but is just like a, hey, I had this friend who went through a thing. Luke, your father's not a bad guy. He just did some bad things. Exactly, right. Like, he was seduced by the dark side, therefore evil is not born, it is taught. Okay, I will totally go with that. I was more looking at this from uh, the angle of an evildoer thinking that uh, you can take a person that isn't bad and make mm. them bad. Um, yeah. So. I see that, that as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll I'll totally roll with Obi-Wan. I like it. Yep. Sounds um, good. Works for me. Uh, what do we got going on in this episode? Yeah, the newsreel is a straight-up recap of last episode, mm. and then it hops into kind of a – the transition statement is basically – Talking about uh, how Dooku is going to Dathomir to recruit the Night Sisters to revenge against the attack that happened on him, which, unbeknownst which, to him, was the Night Sisters. Right. So he's going to hire the people that attacked him to help revenge his attackers. Right. He thinks they were Jedi, full blown. So the the plan from last week definitely worked. Uh. Uh, yep. That is Mother Talzin's plan. Yep. So Dooku arrives on Dathmere. He's got a little walk and talk with Mother Talzin. Um, da, 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 da. I'm deciphering my notes here. <laughs> so Dooku um, is basically so basically what we just said in the newsreel. Dooku is just addressing straightforward with Talzin, like, "Hey, I need to get mm-hmm. a, a new warrior to replace Ventress, who is now dead." So right. He says it straightforward. He is under the impression, full blown, that Asajj Ventress is dead. So he also tries to recruit her into the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Essentially, mm, she's yeah. He's like, hey, we can renew our friendship if you just join the Separatists. And she's like, yeah, that's not gonna help. 
that's not going to happen. The only people right. that we rely on or trust are each other. So, right. uh, you know, let's do this thing. I offered to help you find a new apprentice. Uh, but after that, I hope to never see you again. And right. Dooku is basically yeah. like, yep, sounds good. Super duper. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, so we cut to some witchy green stuff. It's like the smoky fire witchiness. Mm-hmm. This turns out to just be a drink that Talzin is making for Dooku, which he readily accepts. I would be pretty skeptical of somebody just conjuring some some shit out of the air. Right. As a Dark I'm Lord of the gonna, Sith. I'm not going to lie. Like As we continue on with these Night Sisters and this hybrid force, force magic so, force magic sorcery yeah. thing mm-hmm. like i as as close as we can get without having my hand completely held i still need just some rule explanations right like, I, I guess I can understand that. There hasn't been, like, any world building as far as, like, magic goes in the Star Wars universe. And this is, like, the beginning of that. So, yeah. it does take a little bit of leading. Um, or, I guess, I can definitely understand how, you know, you would need to be led a little bit to, to follow what's going on. Right. Yeah, like, I I don't... There, there are certain... I don't know why my brain makes certain delineations, like... Making potions, making drinks out of thin air, great. The whole cup? Like a physical object? Uh, I guess I didn't realize you know, like the, the cup did as well, but yeah. uh, I did realize when the cup wasn't on I, the table. The whole, the whole thing apparates in front. The whole thing apparates in front of him. So at hmm. least like, so this is uh, the, the in the Harry Potter universe, you know, movies one and two, fo- food appears on the table, right? In a snap. Like, just shows right up. So it's like the opposite of Thanos, right? Yeah, <laughs> where snapping makes food appear. Yeah. But, you know, it, w- in book five, there's, like, the revelation that there are indeed, like, house elves cooking all that food, and mm-hmm. then they are just apparating the food onto the tables. Right. There's, like, a replica of tables one floor below the great hall. Right. So they they prepare all the shit, they lay it all out, and then when in, and when then it's time, just, uh it they just beam it up, Scotty. Yeah. Yep. Um just to keep mixing in more references. So yeah, at least there are like there are consistent rules within the Harry Potter universe to some degree there. Okay. Right. So at least it's like that issue of like matter cannot be created nor destroyed, right? Sort of thing. So here's what happens. Uh huh. There are force house elves. There are right. force magic that's, sorcery that's all house I elves. That's, that's all I need. That's all I need. There you so, go. But yeah, so I'm not knocking the fact that it's happening yet. I am just saying mm-hmm. that I don't recall there being, like, from what I can recall of my first run through, I don't recall there being much more world building in that regard. I just would have appreciated a little bit more of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can totally, I point totally that? get that. It wasn't, yeah. I, okay. I'm going to say outright, wasn't something that bothered me, but it makes right. sense. Yeah, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't bother anybody. It's just one of those mm-hmm. weird things that I was like, I can I can see conjuring a potion, mm-hmm. but as to a, a metal chalice. <laughs> yeah, It's a potion chalice. I don't right. know. So. But uh, I did like her <laughs> comment that she's like, Dooku takes this and drinks it. Surprised the shit out of me. I was, I'll, I'll say, I was more surprised that he uh, took a sip of this drink than that a cup appeared out of thin air, right? But uh, I also was surprised that he drank the cup, no question. So, yeah, she says it's black root to uh, help replenish the body after your long journey. Uh, and then she brings up Darth Maul. Yes. The reason she brings up Darth Maul is because he is from Dathomir. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's like, you know, I'm sure you've heard of this dude. And uh, is is Dooku being coy here, or is he truly not really that familiar with Darth Maul? Because he's like, yeah, I think I've heard of him. He uh, he was killed by Obi Wan on on Naboo. I think Great it's one warrior. of those situations where it's like he has heard of him. 
mm-hmm. but like he doesn't really want to get into it. There's no reason to get into it, mm-hmm. perhaps. But it's like so he's just being a little reserved with the information that he is going to uh, reveal about how much he actually knows. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like I think it's this is a moment where it's like, hey, we have this warrior. This is our lineage. We can offer you more of that. And he's like, great. You know, if mm-hmm. that's what you're selling me, you know, like if yep. you if you name drop somebody, does it matter if you know the name or not? You mm-hmm. know, sort of thing. Yeah. So he accepts the offer uh, for a essentially a relative of or someone within the bloodline of Darth Maul to replace Asajj Ventress. Were was it bloodline specific or that's what she I, says. She says his bloodline or there are few within his bloodline that still uh, live yes. on. Okay. Okay. And they yes. they chit chat a little bit more and he's like, All right, let's do it. Then he gets in the ship and he leaves. Yep, just out of there. It's like, hey, you you do your business. Come back with the strongest. Fantastic. This seems like a conversation that could have just happened via space Skype. Yeah, could have hologrammed in. Yep, definitely. Um, again, I've... it comes. It goes to the conversation I had with you last week, where it's like, in the rule of two, there are so few people leading this shit. What is Dooku doing? If there's so few heads. At the top of this separatist army, <laughs> but he has time to just just go make these side deals, right? And we decided that there are more generals than we have seen, right? Uh, there are fewer than the Republic has, mm-hmm. because every fucking Jedi is a general, even if they just became a Jedi Padawan like twenty seven minutes before, right? right. Uh but. It's also a smaller thing. You would think that he would have to like do some more micromanaging and and macromanaging for that fact. But right. uh he's you know, splitting his duties. I don't really have a direct answer to that. I know we discussed yep. it last week. Absolutely. It's it kinda yeah, is we, what it is. Definitely. Um it does seem like the Clone Wars itself themselves I don't know how that works. But uh is oddly localized and specific to whatever needs to be done at that moment and not as grand as uh, sometimes the Senate makes it seem. I don't right. really know. Yeah, under that's fine. So what do we have happening next in this episode? So Dooku leaves and then uh, Mother Talzin and... Uh, Asajj Ventress are talking. Uh, Talzin is basically like, "We're gonna, we're gonna make this recruit our pawn." She says, "We're gonna use all of our magics." I thought it was interesting that she, it's plural. It's not magic. It's magics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a. It's one of those weird things. Hmm. Yeah, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, Ventress then says, "Yes," and then we will. What'd she say? Then we will betray him. So basically, they're explaining the plan of what's going on. They're going to go pick somebody from from Darth Maul's hometown mm-hmm. uh, who is supposedly a bloodline of Darth Maul. Yep. Which, uh, this kind of confuses me because it seems like all of the males from the town are related then. Yeah, I didn't... See, that's why I didn't get that it was like... I couldn't tell if bloodline was... Like literal or, or right, yeah, exactly, figurative. literal or figurative, because they so. call themselves like this group calls themselves the sisters. Later, we hear peop, we hear characters referring to each other as brothers. We right. can we can get a little more into that then. But uh, here's the plan: pick somebody from the town. Yep, got that. Send them to Dooku. Got that. Yep. Let Dooku trust this dude. Yep, and then when Dooku is vulnerable. Say the magic words, and uh, this apprentice is going to flip and kill Dooku. So, basically, Star Wars Manchurian Candidate. Yes. Yep. Yep. 
So I agree. Yep. So we got a we got a space Manchurian candidate. Yes, sir. At this point, Talzin sends uh, Ventress to find said candidate. Uh, we get a little speeder scene. That's kind of whatever. She arrives at the village. Uh, these are a whole bunch of dudes that look like Darth Maul, right? Yep. Different color scheme, different patterns on their face, but essentially, yep, yeah, they all look like Darth Maul. <laughs> we have a we have a chief that is like, yo, the sisters here, everybody line up, and then we get like rank and file of like I don't know twenty dudes or something, something and. Like uh, Asas Ventress goes through and basically places judgment on all of them. And it reminds me of uh, the movie Fight Club. Mm -hmm. When Tyler Durden comes outside and he's like, oh, you know, too fat, too short, too thin, too blonde, too stupid, too whatever. And Mm -hmm. this is what she's doing to these guys. She's like, oh, you're too short. And then she'll like nut punch him or something or like kick him in the throat or... Uh, the first guy, she just she just looks at him, grabs him by the throat, chokes him out, and throws him on the ground. I was like, she just murdered that guy, but he does move. He's not yeah. dead. Yeah, he, he nobody dies right away in this scene. Yeah, this the the reasoning for disqualifying people just seemed so odd to me. It was just so random. The reason for qualifying them as well, like it's just like, ooh, you look tough, or right. Uh, your nostrils like, are the right size. Know? Like, it, right. I, so we find weird, out. Because like, she gut punches somebody, then says, this person's too weak. But I'm like, anybody getting gut punch would have that same reaction. Right. Uh, many people would have, like, a gaseous reaction as well. You know, not expected, right. punch in the gut, you know, might have farted yourself. Just saying. Right. I don't know what she was expecting there. But uh, she chooses six out of all of the dudes that are here. Yep. Uh, at and first they I do include was... two named characters. So at this point, there are only two of them that we fully really get introduced to. And that is Savage and... Mm-hmm. Feral. Feral. Yep. Yeah. Colin so Feral. as Yeah. So as they're running into the formation... Um, we get a short little conversation between the two of them and they each mention each other's names. Yeah. So this conversation is basically like, try not to make yourself noticed. Right. Don't stand out. Something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Which they both fail because they're both chosen. Uh, Do they know what's going on? Do they know that? I don't think so. Because it definitely seems like, like the, when the chief is like, Hey, everybody line up, they like line up and, uh, I think they're I, trained to a certain extent, right? So they're they're say mm-hmm. militiamen, right? Mm-hmm. But as to what Asaj is doing, that's a different scenario. Okay, they're probably all fight trained. They're probably battle ready. Just yeah, they're definitely like, sparring when she pulls up. There's a whole right. bunch of different spar sets going on. But as to the idea that hey, this person's gonna pick you and personally groom you. Mm-hmm. That I don't think that is clear to anybody. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, so then after and I would, this... Yeah, go I, ahead. I was going to say, I would say that um, maybe they would like remember when Darth Maul was taken. But from what I understand, Darth Maul was taken as like a three-year-old. Like a young child. Mm-hmm. And groomed up through Sithdom right. to be a Sith warrior, maybe Dark Lord of the Sith, right? He does have a Darth title, mm-hmm. so he's probably a Sith Lord at that point. But mm-hmm. um, these guys, A, probably wouldn't be old enough, and B, it would be a completely different circumstance mm-hmm. unless they're all the same age and they've all grown up together. But the Chief seems about the same age as them anyway, so right. uh, there's, a, it's questionable why Savage talks to I don't remember if it's Savage that tells Feral or Feral that tells Savage like hey just basically fly below the radar as though yeah. they would know that if they're chosen there's a chance that they're going to leave right. so they do end up being chosen part of this first six mm-hmm. and uh, Asajj lets everybody know there's going to be three tests 
the soul champion is going to come with me and yep. serve me and uh we're gonna go from there so um at this point test all... one is yep test one is a bunch of candidates with uh some melee weapons and uh the chief like claps his hand to start this fight and they are just they have they are in a circle around asajj ventress and all of them just attack her like at the same time so she whoops some ass yep uh she throws some axes uh she slices some swords around there's uh one dude that throws a spear at her and she straight catches it which was pretty badass yeah. I, will, I will say that choreography here is pretty good yeah uh it's they've stepped up their game recently i don't know if that's just season three or it's or if it's more assets well. or yeah or what but um yeah, it's framed well, and I will say um, we haven't seen a lot of hand-to-hand combat, you know, mm-hmm. which we get a little bit of here. Which We is get more of really it than cool. we do in, like, lightsaber duels. Right, exactly. Right, because even yeah. when we had the choreography there, there's still, like, the blade-to-blade. Mm-hmm. This is either alternate weapons or no weapons at all. Exactly. So it's it does change things up. Uh, for the better, I would say. Mm-hmm. Just fresher. It's a fresh feeling to this show. So after she catches the spear, she throws it back at the guy. Gut, Straight in the chest. Gut stabs him. He's dead. Yep. Uh, I guess at this point, she calls it and says, okay, round one is done with. So we went from six to four. Mm-hmm. And then uh, round two, she says something to the effect of, uh, in order to fight against the force... You need to be able to fight without seeing what you're fighting. Right? Or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. So then the chief turns all the lights out because yep. now it's dark. So now all four of them have to fight her in the dark. Uh, she takes out two of the guys real quick. Like, I'm pretty sure one dude gets his throat slit yeah. and just falls to the ground. And then the second guy, she just like, I don't know, bum Slices rush tackles him. At some point, and yeah. He falls down, so then we're down to Feral Savage, and, Savage yeah. and Feral. Yep. Uh, it was at this point that I noticed that um, the Zabrax have glowy eyes, like luminescent yeah. eyes in the dark, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, it's not. I mean, I don't. I don't even know if that's a thing or if that's just like an effect that was done for this segment um yeah i feel like it's that more than anything because it's not we've seen darth maul in the dark in episode one in the nighttime and his eyes weren't well we saw him hooded luminescent. yeah that's very true very true so uh, I, I feel like it's just a thing they're kind of doing to be cool here yeah well i liked it so yeah. uh Give me a special edition of episode one and make his eyes glow. I'm cool with that. <laughs> I have no problem with that at all. Uh, yep. The way that this uh, challenge number two ends is that don't they get, don't Savage and uh, Feral get separated or something and Asajj like knocks Feral down? No, 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 no. So what happens is. So the the second of four goes down, mm-hmm. and Asajj is getting ready to strike one more time, mm-hmm. and Savage feels it coming, knocks oh, both right. himself down and Feral over, misses, uh, Asajj misses them essentially, and then Asajj goes, "All right, great, you pass this one on to the next." Yeah. So what if she killed both of them? Then she just like she's like fuck it, bring moving everybody on. out again. Yeah, moving That's, on. With- uh, or move yeah. on to like the next town or some shit. Or just more know. people, fun, you know, work uh, up. You're right. So this was this will be the second time that Savage has saved Feral because mm-hmm. in round one, that's when Asajj was going after Feral specific. Uh, Savage was coming up on Ventress, and then instead diverted to like help his buddy out. Right. 
And this is when they're calling each other brother, like, oh, brother, I won't leave you. Oh, brother, Mm -hmm. where art thou? And whatnot. And um, so this is where my question arises. Are all these guys actually brothers? Um, They're called the Knight Brothers. Yes. And then I did uh, look up some stuff on uh, Wikipedia about the Knight Brothers. Uh And it is... Uh, so it started with some research on Zabrax, which is the the race that Darth Maul is. Um, and most Zabrax live on Erodia, but some of the males live on uh, Dathomir. And when they live on Dathomir, they're called Dathomirian, which is mm-hmm. confusing. And then, but they're also called the Knight Brothers. And then the Knight Brothers themselves are known to, like, the way they populate the planet, I guess, is by mating with the Knight Sisters. So, really, like, all of these people, I guess, would be related? To some degree, yeah. I kind of confusing. Yeah, I don't... I have never seen the Knight Sisters and the Knight Brothers within each group as being literal sisters, and I think that brothers. some of them are, but some of them aren't. Right. To me, in this group of men that line up, even uh-huh. as Asajj is gut punching them, uh huh. I feel like some may be related to each other. We get confirmation that Savage and Feral are brothers. I think they are blood related, mm-hmm. but I do not think that applies to the rest of the men that get mowed down. So it's it's a clanship and a kinship potentially. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm cool with that. Uh so I guess we begin challenge number 3. Yep. Um, Which I do not understand challenge 3 whatsoever. There's no explanation for it. it I mean happens. it's basically the two of them against Asajj a third time. But, but then she so also So what happens is yeah, so what happens is as they are kind of running around the ring that they have been in for mm-hmm. the first two challenges, some giant boxes start lifting from the floor, from the ground. Oh, yeah. I call oh, these stupid the floor boxes. Right. Asajj, so like, I don't... activates these, these fucking square pillars that rise and, and they're fall massive. at yeah. random intervals. Right. And, they're anywhere uh, from, like, five feet across to maybe 10 feet across. Yep. They and vary in maybe, size yeah, and height. Some are like 10 feet tall. Some are 50 feet tall, it, it seems. Yep. Uh, yeah, these are massive pillars that just rise and lower at random, it seems. And I, the point, I don't know what the point is. Is the point to find, like, because Asajj is on the hunt, it seems, as they're up. Uh, Feral and Savage are running through the boxes. Then at some point they run on top of the boxes. So I think this one is a straight hand-to-hand combat. It's like mm-hmm. no weapons, no anything else, and uh, a whole bunch of fucking distractions and shit uh, so they can show their stealthiness, agility, and hand-to-hand combat skills. It's just like all of it wrapped together. Mm-hmm. But what, uh, what Savage says to Feral is... Uh, let's stick together and attack her as a team. Like, right. I'm not, I'm not going to let you die today, brother. See you on the other side, brother. Uh, but my note on this is like, Hey, we got a real hunger games thing going on here. Uh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll work as a team and we'll, we'll try to take the high ground and we'll refuse to fucking kill the other one and, and stay together. That, right. Yeah, Exactly. So, uh, Asajj, or I guess the two of them get separated, and then Asajj yep. comes up in the straight whooping the shit out of Feral. Yep. And uh, Savage steps in, attacks her. They fight for a while. Yep. A bunch of fisticuffs are thrown, mm-hmm. uh, some kicks, some other things. Um, Ventress goes to 
kill Feral, and Savage is like, no, please spare him. You know, take me instead. And we get this one-on-one fight, uh, which ends with Savage pinned to the ground, and uh, Ventress has her foot at his throat. At this point, he says, my life is yours, and she's like, you bet your ass it is. So, uh, from there, we basically cut straight to the two of them on a speeder, heading back to wherever they're going. Um, Savage Back to the Night Sisters. Yep, back to the Night Sisters. Savage and Feral do share, like, a little knowing, longing glance as Mm -hmm. Savage is leaving. Um, Then we cut back to the Night Sisters. Savage meets... Mother tells him she caresses him up and down his face and neck and chest and arms and in uh, probably an inappropriate fashion for for what he is being used for. Uh, and yeah, then I'm going to call this the cut to uh, him. I'm going to call that move the Joe Biden. Is what I'm going to call that one. Ooh, <laughs> I I got nothing. I got no comment. I got I got nothing. Because the the next note uh, I you can elaborate I made was, if you like. Well, no, just weird touching, weird touching. Um, you know, not like nothing sexual. So it's nothing, uh, nothing odd. Just just mildly inappropriate touching, right? Right. It's like it's so, like touching that should be for Biden. Oh, I meant forbidden. My bad. Because <laughs> yeah, my next note definitely is. More weird stuff happening on table. Yeah, we cut to the table. Mm. And, um... <laughs> so that's two was... episodes in a row with weird shit on table. Yep. Then my next note is more chanting. More magicking. Yep. Uh, lots of chanting. More green smoke fire stuff. Yep. Uh, more chanting. And then it kind of makes a point to cut to Asajj Ventress. And she... She is not chanting. She's just standing there silent. She's kind right. of a witness to this rather than a partner to it. Mm-hmm. Um, Savage levitates off of the table. This green smoke fire stuff is like surrounding him. His, his head horns grow like three to four times the length. Right. Uh, his physical stature is increased. Um, I don't know if this is like magic steroids they're giving him or what. Well, it's uh, super soldier serum is basically what I was figuring it was. Okay. So he's like halfway between Captain America and the Abomination? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm down. That's, that's a good – That's yeah, that's pretty much exactly what happened. So there is nice. magical super soldier serum that is being infused into his body – because yeah, on the other end he grows like an extra foot in height. Mm-hmm. Maybe gets doubles the size and also just like full fucking chest circumference. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. He just yeah, he basically hulks out to some degree. Nice. So he is now Captain Savage, I right. think. By yeah. title. Uh his voice is much deeper. So yeah. I'll give him that. Uh, and he settles back down onto the table, opens his eyes, and grabs Asaz Ventures by the throat. Mm-hmm. Um, she's trying to tell him to stop, and Mother Talzin is basically like, hey, calm down. Be calm with him. Use your calm voice. Use your inside voice. Right. And so uh, Miss Ventress says, excuse me, please stop. And he lets go. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Manchurian Candidate potion totally works. That Manchurian super serum. super soldier, yep, <laughs> super soldier magic serum potion. Yep. So it's all yeah, it's all of it together. I need yep. to write that one down. Manchurian <laughs> super. So then, basically, soldier. in this scenario, so then Asajj Ventress is the Angela Lansbury, <laughs> I guess. Hmm. Depends on which version of the. It's this the I barely remember that 2006. Uh, I think that was Jonathan Demi, right? I remember watching it in theaters. Denzel Washington. Yep, Denzel Washington. Um, yep. Sadly, I... I remember the original 
one a lot more, y- even I'm, though I have not seen either of them likely since I was in high school. <laughs> so. I've not seen the original. I uh, did see Denzel Manchurian in theaters, and then a second time sometime within the past probably three years. But not a bad uh, movie, not a bad remake. No. Oh, yeah. Honestly, it, it's been enough time that we could just remake that movie again, and I feel like it would still just be as relevant as it was in the fucking 50s or 60s, whenever the first one was happening. I think that we did, and it was an episode of The Clone Wars called Monster. <laughs> right. Do remember, too, that 2006 to 2011, that's just five years. These are contemporaries of each other. So I feel like there was something in the air of this era of post 9-11 scare mm-hmm. right could be could be very well could be uh so what happens next Asajj no Mother Talzin is like okay it's time for the final test yes uh, bring in the prisoner and the prisoner is Feral Feral uh so As- Asajj uh or is it Mother Talzin tells Asajj to tell Savage. There's a lot of Ajas and things yeah. going on here. Uh, Ventress tells Savage to kill Feral. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, I wouldn't say he hesitates. He just doesn't react. Right. Right. So she slaps him in his strong featured face. And, a good backhand uh, too. Like a nice backhand just straight across the face. One might call that a bitch slap. I always thought a bitch slap was palm. I thought it was a backhand. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I have no idea. I got nothing. Yep. We, but she does, we're not answering she, that here. <laughs> uh, nope. I don't I don't need the answer to that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she does give him a backhand, and uh, she's like, no, fucking kill him. And he does. Grabs yep. him by the throat, picks him up. Feral pleads for him, and he's like, hey, brother, you know who I am, yada, 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 and Savage, I don't remember him saying anything to him, but he definitely just... No, just goes for it. Neck crunch. Yep. Down for the count, dead. Um, So then we move on to the next section, which is another test of the super soldier serum. No, not yet. Uh, what happens is Asajj Ventress gives him like the dark side lecture and she's like, Oh, you're going to be great. Like you're going to use your feelings to fuel oh, right, your right, anger, right. to fuel your power and yada, yada, yada. And then mother Talzin summons, uh, an enchanted blade blessed with our most potent magics out of the ground. Which Again, is just out of like nowhere. Out of nowhere. This big vibro blade. Yeah. Out of nowhere. And, uh, at this what point, what are the limits of the magics? <laughs> Uh, it's whatever the, the, can she space... build a lightsaber? No. Are you sure? She might be able to build the dark saber. We have not talked Are... about the dark saber yet. Are you sure? Have we? We have. have we? No, we have. We definitely have. Cause that came but... up with the Mandalorians, right? Yeah. But could she build that? Cause if Maybe. she can build that, she can build a lightsaber, right? See what are the what are the limits? That's that's all you need to know. What are the limits of the magics? I'm, I'm okay. If she's I stuck in if she's stuck I, in the desert, can she conjure up water for herself? Yes, out of her bladder. Okay, so she can filter her own urine. Yes, but she can't create water. Well, she's got a lot of like smoky vapor things like around her at all times, so she could probably mm-hmm. just like <laughs> pull it out of the air. Um, you know, she, maybe she could become like a moisture evaporator or something. Okay, all right, yeah, Th- yeah. Um, yeah, that's I just that's need my thoughts limits. on that. That's all. Just need no limits. I will say we're only two episodes into the introduction of force magic in general so maybe right. we are gonna learn the limits along the way hopefully hopefully uh, i'm just saying yeah. i'm just bringing up the questions now and then we'll see cut, if they get answered her, later or not cut yeah. her a little slack for now just <laughs> you know, her, 42 episodes, her uh 
Talzin 40... or Katie Lucas? Talzin. <laughs> 42 episodes from now, if we're still talking about uh, shit conjuring out of nowhere, I'll give it to you. Right, 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 right. So, so, so Vibro uh, X has happened, and then, then yep. we do get Dooku back, right? He gets his magic sword of doom or whatever it is. Ventress says it's time to introduce our apprentice to his new master. Uh, they just fucking ship him off. Mm. Uh, we get a transport in space. Dooku is standing out on the dock like, mm, ooh, at last. This whole process seems to have taken two days. Like if I'm going to... If I'm going to fly to another planet that takes an indeterminate amount of time for uh, weird witch black root tea to talk about some guy that's dead for them to offer to find a replacement for somebody else that I think is dead. Right. And that takes, I don't know, a couple of days plus travel time. I'm not going to be like, ooh, finally at last. I'd be like, holy shit, that was fast. Right. Like, I feel uh, like interviewing for cashiers takes longer. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, and there uh, are three physical challenges. That's for damn sure. Well, three physical challenges, then a physical metamorphosis, right. and then you have to kill your brother. Kill your brother, and then we're going to mystically create a vibro axe for you all at the same time yep then you get your vibro axe and then you get on the space bus yep. or the space taxi and then you fly you do your thing across town or yeah. space and uh mother so talzin presents savage oppress this is the first time we get his full name mm-hmm. let's hear it what do you think of it it's fine savage is cool i like savage oppress is fair it doesn't really affect me positively or negatively. It's there. Dooku says, oh, he is a sight to behold. And uh, Savage Press bows and then gets like this. You can see like a knowing look on his face. Mm-hmm. Is he privy to the plan? He's a stooge right now, right? He's a straight Manchurian candidate. Doesn't know what's going on. Like, uh, He is there full of internal dedication to Dooku, right? Right, yeah. He doesn't know that eventually the plan is for him to do something about this Dooku character. I don't character. think so. No, not okay. at all. Yep, full Manchurian on this one, I would say. Cool. Uh, so Mother Talzin's gone. We cut to an interior of uh, Dooku's palace. Uh, everything is very tall, like his beard is. Um, Dooku wants a some proof of skill. So he shows a, he shows Savage this temple mm-hmm. on the jungle planet of Deveron, which is the temple of Edit. Is this a Jedi temple? Because it so. looks like it looks like one. Yeah, it's hard to so. tell. Um, Savage doesn't even really say anything. He doesn't have much of a response, right? Yeah. He just sort of questions that it's a temple. Like, he just goes, a temple? I don't think he's questioning the mission. He's just questioning, like, he's like, it's like verifying, right? Okay. You know. Yeah, because the reason I bring that up is Dooku is like, don't don't cast it aside too quickly. Like, right. This is going to be tough, and it's uh, the, the Republic wants it because it's really important. And if we want to do anything in that sector, we have to take the temple. Right. I think, yeah, there's a, definitely a small disconnect between the two deliveries there. Because mm-hmm. from my end, it's what Savage is doing is one of those. It's it's almost like that joke in airplane where it's like, oh, this guy is sick. We got to get him to a hospital. A hospital? Like, what's that? Oh, you know, that big building with people that get sick and you and doctors in it, right? <laughs> like, It's like one of that situation where I'm like... Right. But like Dooku takes it in this other way where I'm like, I don't I don't think he was questioning it. He was just verifying the information. Like, it's, oh a hospital. It's just part of like the conversation that happens, mm-hmm. right? It's like that so, thing that naturally happens when you go to a movie theater and the ticket taker is like a movie, the movie. theater. <laughs> well, not even that. Like you go to the movie theater and you know, you give your ticket to the the ticket taker and they go enjoy the movie and you go you too 
Just one of those natural things that happens. Right. Like, it's I've like, already seen it. The boat sinks at the end. Right. They're not watching a movie. They're just, but you're just trying to make pleasant conversation, and some people don't, you know, like, you, you know that's not proper conversation, but then just whatever. Right. So, anyway, so then where do we go? We go to the planet, right? We go to Deveron. Yep. And, uh... Savage Opress shows up. His ship lands in like mid battle. We've got clones. We've got droids. Uh, and of course, they're on like a like an elevated bridge. Thing. Yeah, uh, a drawbridge, shall we say? Catwalk's mm-hmm. a good a good thing. Uh, good description. And he just runs down this alleyway, elevated alleyway, whatever we want to call it, and. Uh, taking out droids, taking out clones, like nothing is slowing this guy down. Uh, turns out there is two Jedi uh, defending the front doors. Um, he dispatches of them both very quickly. This is a master and, a, and an apprentice. Uh, takes out the master very quickly, and uh, the Padawan lasts even less than... Uh, than the master, less, yeah. Less than the master. He gets right. taken out. Yep. So, just real quick, this is Jedi Master Halsey, and then Apprentice Knox. Okay. Halsey and Knox. So, yep, that's done. That's good to know because Dooku's I did good. have. Yeah, he yeah. skypes into Dooku, and he's like, "Yep, Jedi are dead." Uh, Dooku's like, "Mission accomplished." <laughs> just Come like back. How I like him. Come back home. <laughs> Like don't don't go inside and make sure there's not like fifty more fucking Jedi in there or more no. clones or anything. Like, I guess everybody that was alive on this planet was existing on this bridge, and Savage just wiped them out in like yep. thirty seven and a half seconds, yep. like super quick. Uh, Dooku's impressed. He's like, return to Sereno, and uh, so that's what we do. We cut back to Sereno. Dooku gives some compliments to Savage, and uh, he talks about his his new plan. And he's like, you're powerful. I'm powerful. We're going to make a great team. I'm going to teach you some stuff. It's going to be huge. We're going to we're gonna take out Darth Tyrannus. Nope, because he is Darth Tyrannus. We're going to take out Sidious, yep. and we will rule the galaxy together. Um this seems out of character for Dooku. I don't feel like he's on a quest for world domination. Yeah, especially after kind of what we saw the last episode where he was definitely more even-tempered and calm mm-hmm. for the most part. I guess regarding, I don't really... Regarding his relationship with Asajj anyways. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like, I guess I don't really see Dooku as like the the rule the galaxy type of guy, so yeah. Like I feel mm-hmm. like he's enjoying where he's at, right? Yeah, like he's enjoying his role. He doesn't he doesn't really need more per se, right? I think he maybe disagrees with like the the as Palpatine would say the dogmatic views of the Jedi, right? Mm-hmm. Uh. But I guess I don't really know where, like, what's his motivation to help Sidious? What's he getting out of it? Is he just, I don't know. Does he think that the Republic is corrupt and is, like, needs to be, you know, you got to upend the apple cart to fucking, to make your apple pie, or? I guess, like, I I think he's just down for the Separatist cause. But he... Is like the separatist movement. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that. We'll have to come. We'll have to come back yeah, to we'll this. Think we're about gonna that have to more. We're gonna have to continue diving into why Dooku is doing what he's doing. Right. So, um, yeah. At that point, uh, Savage Press, you know, like knee to floor, chin to chest, pledges his servitude to. Dooku, we get a close up on Dooku's face. Cue loud music. Iris in. That's it. Indeed, that's the end of this one. Yep. Um, casting uh, yeah, voice casts. I've got Corey Burton, of course, is Dooku, but then he's also credited as the voice of 
Lavloa. Then we've got uh, Clancy Brown as Savage Press. Uh, D. Bradley Baker does Farrell and Knox. And then Steven Stanton does Brother Viscous. Um, I'm glad that you pointed out that Knox is the Padawan, right? Yeah. Um, and then what was the what was the Jedi Master's name? Halsey. Okay, I didn't see Halsey on the list. Maybe I just didn't that's even Corey write Burton. It down. Yep, Corey Burton is Halsey. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know who the chief was. Maybe Brother Viscous. Maybe. I'm not really sure. I see there was like more names than than I rec more names in the credits than I recognized being spoken in the episode. So I was confused on like who was who. Yeah, it's not clear. And then honestly, like that whole sequence with all the various characters, like I didn't even realize that the one was like the chief until he was just standing aside and like clapping into the air. So at a situation. Yeah, he's the he's the one that isn't fighting ever and that is just telling the other ones what to do. But and yeah, so but like visually there's nothing about him that stands apart is like what I'm getting at. Right. Agreed. So when I see him, there's nothing about it that goes, that's the chief. Nope. Maybe, just another, just another maybe, dude. Maybe the village is operated like a third grade, grade classroom. So it's like, Hey, it's your day to clap the erasers and it's your right. day to take the trash out. Like, uh, you know, I picked, I picked good and I clap your erasers. You picked bad and you take out trash. Right. So, so yeah, I got nothing. But, I, I don't know who the person is honestly, but I don't either. So I think we can move on from that. Uh, let's hop into thumbs up, thumbs down. What you got here? I'm going thumbs up with this one. Okay. Um, I do enjoy this one. It flows a lot better than last week's episode. Mm-hmm. We don't get a lot of that weird start and stop and side things. And the the story itself is definitely more contained, right? Okay. We do get these weird acts. I will say this whole battle that kind of happens on that catwalk with the two Jedi Masters sort of happens out of nowhere and happens very quickly. It makes sense within context of the story, but it's just like a weird side step to get there. Okay. There could have been many other ways for him to prove himself to Dooku. Like I honestly thought when that scene was starting that Dooku was just going to fight him himself for a scene. Okay, so rather than yeah, this weird like whole like hey, he just flew into this planet and then now he's back. I am gonna give this one a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. It's this one. It's closer to the middle for me than I think mm-hmm. it is for you. Um, and here's why. Uh, for me, it felt like it was there was like this jump from here to here to here to here. Kind of, it was jumping back and forth. It wasn't even like an A plot B plot thing. It was just right. like, oh, let's you know, like Dooku shows up on planet, has tea, Dooku leaves. Right. Oh, I agree. And then yeah, later Savage Press does the same thing. When at the point where Dooku is like, I want you to prove yourself. I thought like this was the end of the episode. Like when I Savage too. meets Dooku, I totally it was like too. this was like a four act play. When I was expecting a three act play, but act Act Two was just kind of an interlude that could have been an Act One. It was weird. Oh no, I completely agree. Um, up to that point, that would have been a mm-hmm. solid thumbs up. And then yeah, I agree with you. Like that, like I said. I didn't expect them. I didn't expect to visit another planet. Essentially, once we got back to Dooku's palace, mm-hmm. you know. But there's a I, lot of traveling going on. Yes, definitely. Dooku comes to Dathmir, leaves Dathmir. Uh, yeah. Ventress goes to the other side of Dathmir, comes back to the Night Witches. Then Talzin takes Savage Opress to Dathmir, and then he goes from there to uh, wherever he went. Another D planet. I don't remember. To what? Devron? Devron. Yep. From Deathmere to Devron back to Serena. Serrano. Yeah. Serrano. Uh it's I don't I don't that, disagree with you. Yeah, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. Like this isn't like my favorite episode by any means. It's just 
more agreeable to me than last week's episode. Um, and at least there's more interesting things happening in this episode that kind of pull me along. Whereas last okay. week I, d- I was just kind of bored. Interesting. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't interested in last week's episode, even though it was dropping a lot of very important, very big developments. Mm-hmm. It just was, it was laying Not, the foundation for things to come. Yeah, and, and that episode itself just wasn't structured quite right for me to call it a decent enough episode, right? Whereas mm-hmm. this one is. This one is mm-hmm. there there are at least enough things here. The 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 fight scenes are interesting. The three challenge mm-hmm. structure helps keep things moving, right? Man, the, the I could have given a shit less about the three challenge. Like, it could have just been, like, go to the fucking town and run in, like, Tom Hardy and just start whooping some ass. And the one person that can defend themselves, you'd be like, okay, you're coming with me. Right, right, right. No, and that's fine. I'm just saying that at least this episode, I didn't feel like in 22 minutes. I didn't feel like 22 minutes felt like an hour and a half like I did last week. Last week, I was like, why are we still here? Fair enough. You know? Like, things, at least for me, the pacing here moves along. I agree in, right until the end. The end is where it definitely falls apart. Because I was like, wait, I thought I thought we were done, but we're going to well, another planet. And that's and, crazy because it's like the last third of the fucking episode. Right. Like, a lot of shit happens in the first like 15, 17, 16, 17 yeah. minutes. Because it then really is like, like five. It's just five minutes right at the end. Mm-hmm. It's really just the five. Because I definitely paused it at one point, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, we're we still got four minutes or so here." So yeah, and it's weird because, like, if anything, I I could have gone more in depth with maybe the challenge. Like, if again, if we just like focused on the challenge, right? Mm-hmm. Like, build up that ladder system or whatever, right? Get more brutal with it. But um, I appreciate how dark this episode got. In in bits, I really appreciate the idea of just Asajj just straight up mauling these people, and then Savage just straight up doing away with Feral, right? Mm-hmm. I I really like that darkness here, uh, but yeah, I still have questions I, as I I've did, asked throughout this episode. <laughs> yeah, I did definitely forget that uh Savage's final test would be killing Feral. Mm-hmm. Uh and I think it kind of surprised me. There's a lot more murder on screen in the past handful of episodes than if you go back to like season one and stuff like that. Oh right. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean but I like that. That's I, I like you that get, stuff. You got bone snapping and uh you know blasters to the to the face and other other stuff going on yeah lots uh, of impaling you know i guess that shows a maturity of the show not that uh, th- mature in the aspect of uh moving toward a more strict rating than tvg well it's to me it it's putting the war back in Clone Wars, right? It's always kind of bothered me that the earlier seasons have this weird light, airy, happy-go-lucky atmosphere around the concept of a ridiculous war. Yeah. Right. Okay. And and I feel like we are at the the like this episode in particular you know, I I don't have a clear memory of how the 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 rest of the series plays out or like when things play out per se. Like I might have memories mm-hmm. of moments here and there, but I can definitely feel here in this episode that we do cross a threshold where like shit just gets dark, right? Yeah, I was definitely I guess had convinced myself that it was going to be like another two seasons before Savage Opress popped up. Um, mm-hmm. but that's not the case. I mean, we're, we're mid season three. So, right. I mean, we're basically mid series here Yeah, and, uh, Savage is here. Um, 
I don't know how long he's going to stick around, but uh, I'm excited to see what is coming. Um, I don't think it's going to be any surprise in looking at next week's episode title, which is Witches of the Mist. That uh, That's going to be a continuation of these past two episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether or not it's a trilogy or beyond that, I guess we will find out. But uh, if you don't have anything else, I think that uh, we can we can move on from this one, wrap this one up, and, and get out of here. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, if if you have different opinions than, you know, ours or whatever, you know, there's ways to reach us. You can hit me up on Twitter at not the nerds. Lorenzo's over on Facebook at not the nerds podcast. Uh, traditional email is not the nerds podcast at gmail.com. Um, these episodes do post to YouTube with a static image and the, uh, the audio, uh, you can have some interaction over there, post in the comments, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. We love to say thanks to Kevin for doing the uh, illustration, uh, our hero pose, as you will. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at they call me KDub. And then, as always, Lindsay, thank you for putting together our intro outro music. And if anybody wants to email her, she is at strangefancymusic at gmail.com. Again, next week is Witches of the Mist. I've been Kevin. Lorenzo here. This is our thunder you're looking for. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.